want to support our ministry and be a blessing to us, you can safely and securely give on our website uh, through Cash App and or Push Pay. And we just thank God for you for those that have been supporting our ministry. And let's continue to do all we can while we can. Let's continue to come out to the house of the Lord while we can. And then we encourage everyone, uh, if you would, uh, to uh, let everybody know that we're maintaining social distancing. We're wearing our masks. Amen. We're taking temperatures. We're doing being as safe as we can. And we're going to let the Lord do the rest. Amen. There's another opportunity. I'll be here in a few days uh, for uh, Kmart over in Kansas City, Kansas. We'll be having uh, free flu shots uh, for Kansas residents and Missouri residents, residents where we come. Uh, and we have some plans that will pass out. Uh, if you know of somebody who can do these, uh, all three of the uh, products will be available for both your uh, vaccination and the booster. So we uh, just want to share that again, get everyone uh, covered as much as possible. Amen. And just then again, God will do what he does. Amen. So we're just grateful for another day. Amen. Uh, to all of our listeners, our conference call again, to our Facebook Live, please share, like, and or subscribe. It is gntbckc.org. God loves you and so do I today. We're going to have another selection from our music ministry after which we'll prepare our hearts for, uh, amen, uh, our morning scripture, uh, sermon, excuse me. But our response is reading Psalms 119, 105. Thy word is what? To my feet. And a light. To my path. Our vision model. Pouring oil for the lamp for me. To light the world. Again, we believe that the oil that's in our lamp is the word of God. It's the word of God that makes a difference in our lives. Amen. And we're to share the word of God as we evangelize, as we just, uh, make disciples. It's the word of God that will change us, that, that will rearrange us. Amen. And, and get us to be where God would have us to be. So we all need to, again, the Bible says, keep your lamps trimmed and burning. Amen. Mm -hmm. In other words, be ready when Jesus comes. And then when the bridegroom comes, and it might be too late for the gate to be closed. Amen. So we just want to thank everybody. Amen. That's here on today. All of you that's coming out. And again, let's uh, just keep everybody lifted in prayer. Amen. And all the sickness around us, all that's happening uh, across the country. Amen. Across our world, we still need prayer. Amen. In our schools, in our homes, in our churches, we still need to pray. Amen. Now, God bless you. God keep you. It's our prayer. Again, it's Brother White, just ran off, come to us once again. It's in my heart.
We only see the outside of God and looks at the heart. Amen. The innermost of our being. He knows all things. Amen. Because he looks at our hearts. Amen. We're thankful again for that selection. God bless you. God keep this our prayer. Let's bow here in a word of prayer. Eternal God, Father, Lord God, we come once again with bowed heads and humble hearts, Lord. We come because you're God and beside you there is none other. Oh, Father God, we come, Lord, with a spirit of thanksgiving, Lord. Just thank you for watching over us last night while we slumbered and slept. Oh, Father God, as the storm passed over, Father God, you kept us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. And Father God, again this morning, you touched us with your finger of love. I uh, realized, Lord, it's not that we kept your commandments so well, Lord, it's just that, Lord, you love us, Lord, your grace and your mercy, Lord, has just sprung forth to, uh, 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 to your shower us with your blessing, Father God. And Lord, we just say thank you. Thank you for keeping us since we were together on last week, Father God. And we thank you, Lord, for bringing us together one more time. And Lord, if we again approach your throne, we ask you to search our hearts. Forgive us of our sins, our transgressions. Lord, things we've done in thought, word, or deed that's made you unhappy. We have some forgiveness right now. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. And Father God, we ask you to, to just look down upon us, Father God. Uh, Lord, we lift up our, our world to you right now. Lord, our country, our president, the cabinet. Lord, we just lift up those that are in the, the hospital beds of affliction, Lord, uh, those that are homebound, Father God. Uh, lift up, Father God, uh, young people, Father God, and all that's going on in our world today. Lord, those who are still suffering from the hurricanes, the floods, the fires, Father God, the tornadoes, Lord, we lift them up to you right now. And Lord, we just have to do just strengthen us for the week and build us up where we tore down. And Lord, bless every church door that's opening your name, preaching and teaching Jesus Christ and the crucified. Bless the shepherd of your flocks, Father God. And Lord, we just know that you're still, you're still on the throne. You still sit high in the floor. So Father God, while others are calling, do not pass us by. And as we stand here before these dark people on the day, once again, more of thee, less of me. More and more of thee, less and less of me. More and more and more of thee, Lord, and less and less and less of me. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of my heart be accepted on thy side, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Amen. Amen. If you stand as we uh, look at the gospel according to Mark, Mark the first chapter, Mark the first chapter, the 29th through the 31st verse, Mark 1. Amen. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John is the second gospel of the New Testament. Amen. Mark 1, 29 through 31. When you have it, just say amen. <clears throat> amen. Mark 1, 29, read from the ESV translation. And immediately he left the synagogue and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with Jesus, with James. Everybody say mother-in-law. Mother Lay in with a fever, and immediately they took him, told him about her. The 31st verse. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. Amen. We're going to stop there with the Lord and the rest of the readers here and doers of his holy word. Amen. Amen. We want to again look at uh, this passage of scripture. Amen. The 31st verse says that he, talking about Jesus, came and took her, this mother in law, by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her. And he came and, uh, and, and it said that and she began to serve them. Now, this was a sick woman, and uh, for a thought uh, from sickness to a servant. Mm, from amen. sickness to a servant. Mm -hmm. Again, from sickness to a servant. The book of Mark opens with the prophet John the Baptist. The referral to the word Baptist is not a denominational in nature, not a denominational in nature, but rather indicating what John did. He baptized. Believers are new converts. Isaiah 40 and 3. Scripture tells us that it was John the Baptist who baptized Jesus Christ. 
Amen. According to the scripture, we find that uh, Mark 9, 1, 9 through 11 shares with us, amen, uh, about this event of being baptized, amen, in Galilee, in the River Jordan. And again, it was to fulfill the Old Testament prophecy we find in Psalms 2 and 7. After being baptized by John the Baptist, we find that Jesus, according to the scriptures, went out into the wilderness for 40 days where he was tempted of Satan. Then we find that if you look at the beginning of this first chapter, that Jesus went on to begin his ministry in Galilee, preaching the kingdom of God is at hand. Amen. This is after we find John the Baptist has been arrested. Amen. And Jesus stepped forth. Amen. He picked up that mantle, if you will, and continued the message that John the Baptist had been preaching. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. We find it in the 14th and 15th verse. Then we find that Mark also records that Jesus called his first disciples. His first disciples. He looked and saw the two brothers. Andrew and Simon. And he called them. They were fishermen. Amen. And Jesus said, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. Amen. Then we see that he went on and he saw the sons of thunder. These are the sons of Zebedee, John and James. Amen. Who, who left their father and followed Jesus. And if you look real closely to those a few uh, scriptures where Jesus called his first disciples, because again, he had started his ministry, we find that those he called dropped what they were doing and followed Jesus immediately. Mm -hmm. Amen. Immediately, they followed. Uh, the sons of Zebedee, they left their father on the boat and followed Jesus. Amen. So Mark 1, 21 through 28, records Jesus' healing ministry. Uh, that's what we are today. God, his healing ministry demonstrating the power of God. And Capernaum was a central city in Galilee where Jesus, amen, where he, that was kind of his headquarters, if you will, amen, and he, and he had gone to see what he always do on the Sabbath day, and that was to go to the synagogue that God, on the Sabbath, and there he taught. Somebody ought to say Jesus went to church. Jesus went to church. Jesus went to church, amen. Jesus, how about us? If Jesus went to church, should we not go to church? Amen. But that's what he was accustomed to on the Sabbath day. And we find that his disciples also followed that same path. That wherever they traveled to, on the Sabbath day, they found the synagogue to go in to preach and teach and be a part of worship. Amen. And it was on the Sabbath day, we find out, according to Mark, that he healed a man who had an unclean spirit. Y'all remember that? Amen. And this miracle spread through all the land. All the land. Amen. The songwriter years ago said, there's a man in town. Yeah. And he's healed. Yeah. And everybody ought to know yeah. that he's healed. Yeah. And, and he's healing your body. And he's also healing your sin, sick soul. Amen. 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 Because there's a man in town. Amen. Uh, that's a message we can still say today in our spirit. Christ is saying yesterday, today, and forevermore. He's still in the healing business. Amen. So this all had traveled throughout all Galilee about this man named Jesus. Amen. That healed. Amen. This, this demon. Just called out this demon from this man on the Sabbath day. And that brings us to our text today. I'm almost done. For <laughs> after church, after church, he went back to that place where he was comfortable, that, that headquarters, that central location, that was the home of, of, of Peter, Simon Peter, amen. And it was there that they find that his mother-in-law, his mother-in-law was ill. Mm -hmm. Said she had a high fever. Mm -hmm. Amen. Any of us ever had a high fever? Mm -hmm. Amen. Where you actually, you're burning up from the inside out. Mm -hmm. Amen. Your body aches, your head aches, your eyes hurt. You're sick. This woman was sick. Amen. But they told Jesus about her. Amen. They told Jesus about her. And Jesus responded to their request. And, and we don't know. It doesn't tell us. It's just that she was sick. Amen. And we find through other scriptures, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, of uh, the difference, if you will, 
pictures or the viewpoints of these three different writers. Amen. We find three different reports. Matthew 8, 14 and 15 report says, and when Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying sick with the fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her. And she rose and began to serve him. Y'all get that? Uh -huh. Mark 1, 29, 31, our verse today says, And immediately he left the Son of God and entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Now Simon's mother-in-law, amen, was ill with a fever, and immediately they told him about her, and he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and the fever left her, and she began to serve them. Then we got to go and see what Dr. Luke had to say, the physician. And he was a doctor. Maybe he had analyzed what had happened to this woman. But it says in chapter 4, 38 through 39 of Luke, and he arose and left the synagogue and entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was ill with a high fever, and they appealed to him on her behalf. 39th verse, and he stood over her and rebuked the fever. And it left her, and immediately she rose and began to serve them. Mm -hmm. However, we find that these three, amen, these three different viewpoints, if you will, uh, they sound a little different as to what Jesus actually did. Amen. But the thing to remember is that the results, the end game, if you will, was the same. Amen. The conclusion of the matter, of the whole incident, mm -hmm. after being sick, mm -hmm. one touch from Jesus All right. healed her. All right. One touch from the master yeah. made her whole. Amen. Matthew 8 and 8 lets us know that the centurions are replied, if you will, Jesus, amen, at thy word, just speak it, and it shall be done. Uh, we find as we look at these scriptures again, of uh, the account that he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up as a gentleman would help a woman get up out of a chair or off a seat. Amen. He, he lifted her up and, and it says that uh, her fever left her. One simply said he touched her hand and the fever left. Then we find us that he stood over her and rebuked the fever. That's three different stories. But again, the end result, she was healed. But what's even more miraculous, if you will, is that when she got up, she began to serve. From sickness to serve. She began to heal. Uh, went from being sick to being a servant. Amen. Uh, uh, that's what happened with this woman. Amen. No, usually when we get sick, after being sick, we still want to lay around a few more days. A few more hours. We Amen. We want to milk it a little bit. Hello, somebody. Amen. That, that's what we do. We're not ready to just pop up and start doing things. Huh? We might take another mental health day from our job. Amen. We just don't take one day of sick. We might take a couple of days. Amen. We don't feel like just jumping out of bed and getting back in to what we're supposed to do. I saw your sister tuck over there. She's going to take three or four days. Amen. 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 But we do that, but we find in the text today that when she was healed, when she felt the touch of Jesus, she what? Immediately got up. And she was healed. And again, the centurion that we find even uh, in, in the word, how, how the, the servant was sick, and the centurion went to Jesus and asked him, would you heal my servant? Was able to heal my daughter. But he said, listen, I, I, I'll get there when I can. But he said, man, listen, all you got to do is just say the word. Just say the word, and, and my servant will be healed. Amen. Jesus, we find in these three passages, said he touched her hand, the fever left. He touched her hand, lifted her up, and the fever left. He stood over her and rebuked the fever, and the fever left. And that's the good thing, the fever left, but immediately she got up to serve her. Amen. She just didn't stay in her condition. She could have just laid there, but she got up to serve. Amen. It kind of reminds us, if you will, of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who went from being sick to being a servant. 
You might ask the question, well, what did we see the Lord Jesus sick? Where did we, where, where did we find in the Bible that he was sick? I'm glad you asked. According to the scripture, Jesus was our suffering servant. Our suffering servant. Amen. 2 Corinthians 5, 21 helps us out by saying, For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Amen. Your translation might simply say, He who knew no sin became sin for us. Uh, we know sin, the weight of the world was on his shoulder. What was that weight? Sin. Amen. Matthew 8, 16 says that evening, that evening they brought to him many who were oppressed by demons. And he cast out the spirit with a word and healed all. Who Just with the word. He didn't have to go through just touching everybody. He just spoke the word and people were healed. Amen. Isn't that something? Just speaking the word. It goes on said that this was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illnesses and bore our diseases. Amen. That's what Christ did. Amen. On the cross of Calvary, he, he took our diseases. He took our sickness, our, the sins of the world. And sin, it caused us to be sick. Yeah. Huh? We just said our sin, sick soul. Amen. I, I really see that Jesus bore our sins on Calvary's cross, according to the scripture. That's what Hebrews 9, 28 tells us. It says, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time. Not to do with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. Yet he bore our sins on Calvary's cross. He was sick. Amen. 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 Took all of our care upon him. 1 Peter 2 25, 2 22 through 25 said, He committed no sin. Talking about Christ. He committed no sin. Neither was the sheep found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. The 21st Fourth verse says, he himself bore our sins in his body on the tree. You get that? He bore our sins in his body on the tree. Amen. He, he, he was sick. Christ was sick because he had all the sins of the world upon him. Amen. It goes on to say that he might die to sin and live to righteousness. It says, by his wounds you have been healed. For you were Strained like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. Amen. Isaiah said it plainly. Amen. He said it plainly. 52 and 13. And Isaiah 52, 13. Amen. Behold, my servant shall act wisely. He shall be high and lifted up and shall be exalted. As many were astonished at you, his appearance was so marred beyond human sympathy, and his form beyond that of the children of mankind. So shall he sprinkle many nations. Kings shall shut their mouths because of him. For that which has not been told them they see, and that which they have not heard they understand. Who has believed what we have heard from us? And to whom had the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant, and like a root out of the ground. He had no form or majesty that we should look at him, and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. And as one uh, whom men hide their faces, he was despised, and we esteemed him not. Scripture goes on to say in that fourth verse, surely he has again borne our griefs and he carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Amen. Upon him was a chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. We know that transgressions by his stripes. Amen. By the punishment that he took, 
Again, all that Christ took upon himself was for you and I. It was for you and I. All the sins of the world, all for those that were born, those that get to be born, and those that had already been born, that was in the grave. Christ died for all of mankind. All we like sheep, the sixth verse goes on and tells us in the 53rd verse, we've all gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Jesus was sick, y'all. Sick of our sin. All right. Not sick because I don't want to fool with it. He was sick because he had taken on yes. all of our sorrows and all of our pain, all that went on in life and what still goes on today. Jesus already died for it. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Again, he opened out his mouth like a lamb that is made to the sorry, like a sheep that before his shears is silent. So he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. And as for his, this gener his generation, who considered that he was cut off out of that land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. That, for the transgression, the, those things that we've trespassed, we've gone against the Lord. Yes. That's why he was stricken. That's why he was whipped up night long. Yes. Amen. Our, our sins caused him, if you will, the sickness of the nails in his hands, the nails in his feet. The piercing of his side. Amen. For our transgression. And they made his grave with the wicked. Amen. He was in the grave with the wicked. Amen. He was considered, again, he said that he was numbered with the transgression. The robbers, the cheaters, the liars, all that went on. He was in the grave with them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm. And said, so, although he had done no violence, and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He was put to grief when his soul makes an offering for guilt. Amen. His soul, Jesus' soul, made an offering for our guilt, not his guilt. Amen. He wasn't guilty. He, he knew no sin. Amen. He was put him to grief. Uh, when his soul makes an offering for guilt, he shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days, and the will of the Lord shall prosper in his hands. Out of the anguish of his soul, he shall see and be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous? Folks, that's you and I. Uh -huh. We're accounted righteous for what Jesus did. And he was already righteous. Yeah. He was already holy. He did it for you and I. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But I'm trying to share with you that this suffering servant, amen, went on to become our Savior. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Went from sickness to suffering uh -huh. to our Savior. Amen. Amen. He served us by the shedding of his blood. He said, therefore I will divide him a portion with the many, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Amen. Because he poured out his soul to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and makes intercession for the transgression. That's what Calvary is all about. Jesus paid it off. Jesus stepped up and he did what we couldn't do. Amen. amen. We could not take our own sins away. Amen. But Jesus could. Amen. So all again, all the way to the world was on his shoulder. All the sins, all the transgression. Christ again was sick. But he was our suffering servant. That's what he had to do. But we find that he went on to be our savior. Amen. Yes. Amen. From being a servant to our Savior. That was He. Yeah. So at Calvary, He bore our sins, our sickness to the cross, and became our servant. Amen. Jesus washed our feet. Yeah. Amen. As He washed the disciples' feet. Yeah. Amen. Jesus washed all of our feet. Yeah. He humbled Himself. Yeah. Amen. Became that suffering servant yeah. to serve God's people and to make a way for us. Yeah. Yes, our suffering servant became our glorious. Savior, amen. Amen. We know that because of uh, this passage of scripture that the woman, the mother-in-law that was sick, amen, she got up immediately and went back to work as a servant. And Jesus said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, there you may be also. Uh, the grave, amen, you know, I can imagine they, uh, the enemy, old Satan, amen, when they buried Jesus in a ball or two, I can imagine Satan saying, oh, we got it. Yeah, we got it. Yeah, he died. Mm. 
he dead. You, you're gone. Amen. Amen. Prophet told the grave, just hold him a while like you hold him everybody else. Mm -hmm. Amen. But we know on the third day, yes. Jesus yes. got up on power of heaven and earth in his hand. Yes. We know that he, he arose on that third day, just like he said he would. Just like the prophets had already talked about that this suffering servant who was once sick with all our sins, he's now our Savior. Amen. Because he served those he loved. Amen. All of us, God loves. Amen. And he died for you and for me. Amen. But again, after getting up from the grave, we find again, he said, I go to prepare a place for you. He, he's still working, if you will, on our behalf. Amen. He's still serving us. Amen. He, he, he built it. Amen. The building not made by man. Amen. Because he said, I'm preparing a place for you that where I am, mm -hmm. there he may be also. Amen. So Jesus is still on the right hand of the Father, working in our behalf. He, he's interceding from, to the Father. Every time we mess up. Amen. I can manage from Father, I got that. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, yeah, Amen. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Every time we go through a transgression, yeah. drum don't know no better. Amen. All right. All right. I, I died for that. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He, he's interceding for us. And we find again on TV all these uh, what they call it, uh, interventions, amen. Mm. Uh, people that are trying to step in the gap and help people to get better. Well, folks, Jesus is still in the gap for us a long time. Amen, amen, and amen. And Jesus intervenes for us. Amen. He came to reconcile and bring us back in favor with God, amen. amen. Because at the fall of the Garden of Eden, man was separated yeah. from yeah. the Lord. Mm -hmm. From the Lord God, amen. But thank God for Jesus, thank amen. God. amen. Who came and stood in the gap, amen. Yeah. Amen. He stood in the gap and by his shed blood. Uh -huh. Amen. By his sacrifice, by his serving, by being the servant that he was. Amen. We now have been reconciled back to God. Amen. You make no difference with the problem. I can what? Go to God in prayer. Amen. 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 Uh, we can go to God. Nobody has to step in the gap for us. Nobody has to, if you will, amen, go behind the curtain. We can go to God ourselves. Amen. amen. And see his face. Amen. We ought to be thankful today. For this suffering servant who made a way for each and every one of us. And he said, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And that's just what Jesus did. And we're thankful for the scripture for reminding us of for what, what God has done in helping us to move from being sick to being a servant. We have a great example here that we need to get up and start serving. Yeah. Amen. 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 That's quiet. I got you. I got you. Amen. 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 That's what we need to do. Amen. Yeah. Some folks won't pity. They tell you all the time what's hurting. Amen. I don't feel too good today. Amen. And then they're trying to give you a, 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 a snapshot of what they can't do. Uh huh. They already know they're going to be asked to do something. Uh huh. Well, I'm glad we get better. I need some help for all. <laughs> Amen. Well, listen. Yeah, yeah. We need to get help. Yeah. We're to work out our soul salvation in fear and truth. Mm hmm. A reverence for God. Again, Mama said, "Do all you can. Why don't you?" Can? Yeah. And they said, "Why the blood is going to warm you back." Yeah. You want to write that book? You better get to write. Yeah. Hello, you trying to finish school? You better stay in roll. Amen. Yeah. Whatever it is you're trying to do, this is the only time we get to do it. Amen. Yeah. The only time we get to do it. There's no do-overs. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. We, don't, we don't get no second chances. Amen. Yeah. You know, sometimes when we play games with young people, we ask for a do-over. Amen. We were shooting the horse, whatever the case might be. Well, give me another chance. Let me try one more time. Mm -hmm. We're not going to get that in this life. Amen. So we need to do all we can while we can. Amen. Amen. That's why Jesus came. He died once. Amen. He's not going to die again. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus went to Calvary once. He's not going to Calvary again. Right. Amen. The blood is still, amen, flowing from Calvary's mouth. Mm -hmm. Amen. Again, we know that wasn't the blood for me. One day when I was lost. He yeah, died on the cross. Yeah, I yeah, know yeah. it wasn't healed. Right. By his blood we yeah. healed, by his stripes we are healed. Amen. Our suffering servant came to our rescue. And again, on the right hand of the Father, he is standing in the gap mm -hmm. for you and I. All right. And that's the message we should tell every man, woman, boy, or girl that Jesus is still intervening for you and I. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And that's the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. That Jesus paid it all. Yeah. And all to him I owe. Uh -huh. Amen. We owe the Lord today. 
to serve him. That when we get help, we ought to get up and start serving. Amen. 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 We serve, serve a God that, again, works in a very, uh, if you will, uh, expeditious way. He, he does things immediately. Mm. Amen. When he can. Sometimes, you know, he, he, can, he can wait us out. Amen. We think we can wait God out. No, God can wait us out. Amen. Amen. But God can heal miraculously immediately. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All that he does, again, at his word, God can stop a lot of things. Amen. He can start a lot of things. Uh -huh. Amen. He's not the author of confusion, but God allowed things to happen. Amen. We know that all things work together for yes. good. Yes. We love him. Yes. Amen. And call it according to his purpose. That's what God does. Amen. Yes. Amen. If we just get out of the way and let God have his way. Mm -hmm. Amen. And realize that he is that suffering servant. Amen. That paid the price for you and I. Mm -hmm. And has gone on to be our Savior. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank God for his word and for reminding us yeah. that we got to get up yeah. and get busy again. Amen. We've gone through a sickness. We've gone through a sickness. We're, we're, we're still going through. But as soon as we can, we ought to get on our feet mm -hmm. and try to turn all this around. Amen. The Bible says, you know, take back what the canker worm has. Try to destroy. Amen. We are God's people. Amen. Amen. But we can get up and start doing for the Lord. Amen. Right. Start doing for the Lord. And try to restore back. Amen. His house of worship. Do all we can. Again, as I come to tell you, to help to sustain worship. Amen. To help leave a legacy. Amen. Of what God has done here on this corner of 73rd and Cleveland. Amen. It's all of our responsibility to get up and to serve what's here. There might be somebody here today. Amen. That haven't realized, somebody that listened to us today, that uh, just haven't realized how sick they are. And then we know sin has caused us to be sick. But we have a Savior. We have a, a doctor, amen, that writes out all our prescriptions, amen. Amen. He can do it. He can heal us today. And we just let him. We just confess our sins. And we just invite him into our hearts. Uh, Romans 10, 9, once again, tells us that if we confess, just confess to the Lord Jesus, believe in our hearts and confess in our mouth, that God raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. Amen. Your next duty is to invite the church that's preaching and teaching Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Work out your soul against salvation with fear and trembling. Amen. With a reverence for God. We know we live in a world today that has lost its reverence for God. Mm -hmm. Amen. But we must continue to tell a dying world about the living Christ. Continue to tell people that there still is a man in town and he's healed our bodies, and he's healing the sin, sick soul. Amen. We thank God again uh, for his word, for his word is true. Again, we thank God for that. Come on now. Amen. He
faith is contained in him. I trust the Lord in all things. Amen. Trust him. Amen. We lean not our own understanding, but we lean on the Lord. Amen. Because he can. Amen. 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 Amen.